Hello, I'm Dr. Annalene Weston, a dental legal advisor for dental protection based in Brisbane. And I'd like to welcome you to Risk Bites, our series of podcasts produced exclusively for members of Dental Protection. Risk Bites looks at the key dental legal risks and issues affecting dental practitioners across Australia and provides helpful advice and guidance on how to steer clear of those, leaving you free to provide safe and high quality dental care for your patients. In this edition, what should I do if I receive a letter from the regulator? We're going to focus on that real heart sink moment in a practitioner's life when they open the mailbox and there is the dreaded letter from their regulatory body. And I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Dr. Ralph Neller, to answer the questions that we commonly get asked. So thank you, Ralph. And I wanted to start off with the most common question, really. I've received a letter from my regulator. What do I do now? Thank you, Annalene. Well, the first thing is obviously to contact DPL immediately. Uh, There's two very good reasons to do so. The first one is that it's a condition of your policy, which states that you must notify DPL as soon as practical after you become aware of an investigation or inquiry against you. The second good reason is to to contact DPL is to get advice and moral support from a dental colleague as not unexpectedly, having received a letter from the Complaints Commission or APRA outlining a complaint, it's very confronting given the very nature of the correspondence received. As we absorb the reality of an official complaint that's been lodged by a disgruntled patient and that the matter is now being assessed by the Commission or the Dental Board, being able to contact a fellow practitioner at DPL and speak to a dental legal advisor is a great relief as they'll provide you with guidance and advice on what is involved preparing your response to the complaint. All DPL's dental legal advisors are all experienced clinicians and have assisted many members in a similar situation. To assist the advisors, you'll need to provide a copy of the patient's records as well as the correspondence you've received notifying you of the complaint. While patient's records are considered confidential, you have the right to discuss the complaint and provide background information to your indemnifier. Members can be a little confused when they first receive a letter notifying them about a complaint and how the bureaucratic process of complaints management works. Without going into too much detail, suffice to say the initial notification letter comes from the State Government Department that is charged with receiving all complaints about health-related matters. In Queensland, It's the Office of the Health Ombudsman. New South Wales, it's the Health Care Complaints Commission. Victoria, the Health Complaints Commission. And in other states, it may come from APRA. APRA, of course, is the administrative agency that supports all health boards, which in our case is the Dental Board. Knowing how the bureaucratic process of complaints management works is important, and initially the Dento Legal Advisor at DPL will spend some time discussing this with you. Once the advisor has reviewed the patient's records, they will discuss the complaint with you in general terms. This is an important phase of the process and the relevance of what has been recorded in your records will soon become apparent. You will have already noted in the letter that you receive that a copy of the patient's records must be forwarded with your written response. Hence, the advisor needs to see the patient's records as soon as possible. Once you and your advisor have canvassed the main issues raised in the patient's complaint, you'll be asked to draft a response. A template will be provided to assist you when drafting your preliminary response. We ask that the draft response be forwarded to your case advisor in a few days' time and over the course of the next few days, the advisor and you will finalise your response. Often the advisor will seek clarification from you and ask you to rewrite sections of your draft. At all times, the response must be factually correct and verifiable based on the information contained in your records. Thanks, Ralph. So what can I do now to make it better? Well, it is confronting to receive a letter from the Commission or APRA and instinctively we try to think of ways to placate the patient and whether we should directly try to negotiate with the patient in regards to the matter. Again, knowing the bureaucratic process of complaints management works, how it works, is important when considering what to do next. Perhaps there has already been discussion with the patient and unfortunately the issue remains unresolved. Therefore, the fact that the patient has lodged an official complaint to the Complaints Commission 
means that the patient is really seeking an independent assessment of their issues. Therefore, it would not be recommended that further direct negotiations occur until the assessment process has concluded. It would also be no the norm that when APRA or the dental board is assessing a matter, they will stipulate that direct communication with the patient cease until their assessment has concluded. If that's not mentioned, and sometimes there may still well be concurrent negotiations going on when you receive the notice from APRA, then again, consideration needs to be taken, consultation with the advisor, uh, and a decision made whether it's uh, appropriate to continue the direct approach uh, with the patient. What could I do, Ralph, then, that might make it worse? Well, given this is an official complaint, it's essential that you provide a written submission. If you do not, the matter will still be considered by the Commission and likely be escalated to the Dental Board. So we recommend that immediately you receive a notice from the regulator, please contact EPL and ask to speak to an advisor. We will assist you to prepare your submission. Even though we're all busy practitioners, please don't ignore it. Pick up the phone and call DPL as there is a strict timeline that we're working to, pre to prepare your response and the sooner we're involved, the better you'll be able to provide a concise, well thought out and thorough written response. Usually, you only have two weeks from the date of the letter from the Commissioner APRA to submit your response. That time can go very quickly as we have to re review your records and assist you to draft an appropriate response. We do discuss how best to present a response as it's important to use courteous and professional language rather than include emotive statements critical of the patient. It's also important to remember that the patient will read your response and be given the right of reply. Hence, a good written response should include a factual account of the treatment provided, which is verifiable from your records, as well as provide an explanation and an objective response to the main issues raised by the patient. So what's going to happen next? As previously mentioned, the Commission or ARPA usually work to a two-week deadline when they request your response, whereby um, you're required to respond to the allegations and submit the records. Now, once they receive uh, your submission, there's generally a two to four week turnaround when it comes to their assessment. So again, knowing how the bureaucratic process of complaints management works helps to understand what happens next. So without going into too much detail, if the complaint is with the commission or received by the commission, and it's often assessed in the first instance to determine if it is a professional standards issue or professional misconduct. If it's considered a professional standards matter, it's usually referred to APRA for assessment by the dental board. If it's professional misconduct, which is for very serious matters, the matter is referred to the tribunal. In the main, most patient complaints are referred to APRA or the dental council. When that occurs, you'll receive correspondence from the Commission advising you that the matter has been referred to APRA. They may also even be correspondence from APRA asking if you wish to provide an additional submission. So once the matter has actually been received by the dental board, they'll assess it and apply relevant clinical standards to the treatment that you've provided. They try to work to a reasonable time frame, but sometimes their workload does mean that matters can be held up and it can be some weeks before you hear back from them. This is a very trying time, however, it's usually caused by their heavy workload. If after assessment, the Dental Board or Dental Council determines that they need further information, you'll be notified that an investigator has been appointed to look further into the matter. If that's the case, you will perhaps be given specific questions that they'd like you to respond to. Um, and once those uh, responses are received, the board generally appoints an independent clinician outside of the dental board to provide an assessment of the treatment. Once that expert report is received, the assessment panel assesses the matter and it comes to a proposed determination. They'll write back to you and notify you of this. Again, as soon as that's received, you must contact EPL and we'll assist you in regards to any further responses. Thanks, Ralph. It sounds very serious. Is everyone going to know? 
Well, dental board assessments are confidential and the correspondence obviously with you is confidential. However, the dental board or APRA will notify the patients once they've made their decision. The only time that others will know of the dental board's determination will be if the board imposes conditions on your practice. There is a discretion as to whether it goes on the public register. However, in most instances, conditions will be listed on the Dental Board of Australia's website and it will detail the conditions. The conditions themselves will be maintained on the board's website until those conditions are completed. And once they're completed, then an application can be made and the board will remove those conditions. Ralph, am I going to lose my licence to practice over this? This rarely occurs. Uh, Most matters uh, are certainly assessed at a much lower level and when it comes to suspension, the board doesn't have the power to do that and the matter must be referred to the tribunal for that to occur. However, it's a possibility that in certain circumstances, and this is called the Section 150 immediate action, that a dentist can be suspended if it's considered that it is an urgent matter and the dentist poses a serious risk to the public if they continue practice. (coughs) Generally, as I've said, this doesn't occur, but there are circumstances when I'm sure we would all be aware, matters such as health impairment, uh, that that sort of action may need to be taken. However, in the main, matters that are considered by the regulator in regards to treatment usually fall in the lesser category of disciplinary action. Cautions may be given, conditions may be placed on your practice that may require you to do additional CPD, additional training, perhaps have a mentor. Um, And this is not unusual, but rarely are dentists uh, required to cease uh, practice um, while these conditions are being met. Thanks, Ralph. And how am I going to protect myself against this in the future? Well, importantly, uh, obviously, uh, it's critical that you take good records in regards to the treatment that you're providing. The board uh, assesses records at the same time as they're assessing the treatment that has been provided. The standards that apply are the Dental Board of Australia's guidelines on record keepings, and all members must be familiar with that and adhere to it. When the board is assessing the submission uh, that has been put forward by the dentist, they cross-reference any statements that are made with the dental records. Any statements made outside of of what is noted in the records is called recollection and it can be disputed by the patient. Generally, if the patient says that they dispute uh, that recollection and there's no record uh, mentioned, then it's likely the board will take their view. There are important steps to be taken with dental records and DPO runs seminars in regards to record keeping. Importantly, Any complex or high value treatment needs to have comprehensive notes that cover the presenting condition, the diagnostic tests that have been taken and the findings, the treatment options that were discussed, the risks and warnings that were given, a treatment plan with a quote, and preferably some agreement that the details of the treatment have been uh, uh, fully explained to the patient. It's important that we put emphasis in regards to records as it becomes a critical part of the assessment of any complaint. Wise words indeed, Ralph. Thank you so much and thanks for your time. And thank you to everyone for listening for this podcast. We hope it's been helpful to you and we look forward to speaking with you again in the future. Goodbye. Goodbye.